This is part 46 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to do animations in jQuery using jQuery animate function. Animate function lets us animate CSS properties. Let's understand this function with a few examples. Look at the example here. We're calling animate function on this div element. At the moment, this animate function has got two parameters. The first parameter is a JSON object and this JSON object at the moment has got one CSS property font size and we are setting that property to 50 pixels. The second parameter is the duration for animation. We specify duration in milliseconds. So what is this animate call on this div element going to do? This is actually going to animate this div element while changing the font size from its initial size to a size of 50 pixels. So that change is going to happen over a duration of 2000 milliseconds as an animation. Let's look at this in action. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So here we have a div element. It has got some text. We also have a button element. When we click this button, that's when we want to animate this div element. So within our jQuery ready function, let's find the button element by ID. So when we click the button, we want to call a function. And within this function, we want to animate the div element. So let's find the div element by ID. So the ID of the div element is my div. And we want to animate that, so I'm going to use this animate function. Now, the first parameter is going to be the JSON object with CSS property that we want to change. The CSS property that we want to change is font size. And we want to change the font size to 50 pixels. And we want that change to happen over a duration of 2000 milliseconds. So let's save the changes, reload this page, and look at this. When we click the animate button, look at what happens to the font size. It slowly increases from its initial size to a size of 50 pixels, and that change happens over a duration of 2000 milliseconds. So here is the syntax for animate function. Notice that it has got four parameters. Out of these four parameters, the first parameter is the required one. The rest three are optional. So the first parameter is going to be the JSON object with the CSS properties that we want to change. You could have one or more CSS properties within that JSON object. The second parameter is the duration, duration for animation. We specify that in milliseconds. This parameter is optional. If we don't specify it, the default value is going to be 400. So at the moment, we are explicitly specifying the duration as 2000 milliseconds. If we don't specify that parameter explicitly, then the default is going to be 400 milliseconds. That means when we click the button, notice the font size increases in a duration of 400 milliseconds. The third parameter is easing. This parameter specifies the easing function to use for the transition. The default is swing, but we could also use linear. We'll discuss in detail about this easing parameter in just a bit. The last parameter is complete. This parameter specifies the function that we want to call when the animation is complete. So what is easing? Easing is a technique where the speed and or direction of animation are changed while the animation is in progress. Easing can make the animation start off slow and gradually speed up or start up fast and gradually slow down and a whole host of other effects. The difference between linear and swing easing is very subtle. The URL that we have here lists all the easings that are available if you're using jQuery UI. So if you visit that URL, you can actually see all the easings that are available. So notice the first one is linear, the second one is swing. The difference between these two is very subtle. In fact, to a human eye, look at that. The difference between these two animations is impossible you know, to find out with a human eye. But if you look at this easing right here, you know, look at that. This is going to start off slowly and then gradually speed up. Okay, so these are the different easings that are available if you're using jQuery UI. Now, let's look at another example. Now, here is what we want to do. Look at this, when I mouse over this image, the height and width slowly increases, and on mouse out, it gets back to its original height and width. And that happens as an animation. So let's see how to do this animation using jQuery animate function. So, we're gonna make use of this tulips image for this. So I'm going to get rid of all this HTML. Let's use an image element. Let's give it an ID. Let's call this my image. 
let's give it a height of 100 pixels width also 100 and let's set the source of the image to images for slash tulips and within our jQuery ready function let's find that image by ID so my image now we want to associate mouse over and mouse out event handlers and I'm going to do that using a JSON object so mouse over we want to call a function similarly on mouse out we want to call a different function alright so what do we want to do on mouse over on mouse over we want to set the height and width of the image to 400 pixels okay now if we want to do that we could even use the CSS function in fact let's use CSS function and see what's gonna happen so I'm going to use this keyword to refer to that image element and let's use the CSS function now we want to set two CSS properties height and width so I'm going to use this JSON object and the first property is going to be height we want to set that to 400 similarly width to 400 and we want to do you know almost a similar thing but we want to reduce the height and width to 100 pixels on mouse out okay so let's save the changes reload this page look at this when I mouse over the height and width is increased to 400 pixels and on mouse out it gets back to its original height and width but that happens instantly it doesn't happen as an animation right so if you want to increase the height and width as an animation then instead of using CSS use animate right so animate the increase in height and width and we want that animation to happen let's say for example over a period of three seconds let's do the same thing on mouse out and we want that animation to happen over a period of three seconds so let's reload the page look at this on mouse over now it happens as an animation and on mouse out it gets back to its original height and width so at the moment we're using two parameters of this um, you know animate function the JSON object with the required CSS properties the duration for the animation the third parameter is the easing function that you want to use you could either use linear or swing and the last parameter is the callback function let's say we have this function here let's call this animation complete and all we want this function to do is alert a message when the animation is complete saying animation completed okay so this is the callback function we want to call animation complete okay and we are associating that only with mouse over okay so let's save the changes reload this page and look at this on mouse over it increases the height and width and as soon as the animation is complete look at that we get the alert animation completed once I click OK on that and on mouse out it gets back to its original height and width and upon completing that animation you know on mouse over we get the alert but on mouse out we don't get the alert and that's basically because on mouse out we haven't specified the callback function right now let's look at one more example and here is what we want to do look at this when I click on this image now we have a little animation going on so let's see how to do this animation using jQuery animate function so we're going to use the same image for this example so I'm going to leave that image element there I'm going to get rid of all this HTML I mean all this jQuery code alright now when we click on this image what's happening we're actually changing the position of the image element now keep in mind by default all HTML elements are static and you know we cannot change the position if you want to change the position you have to explicitly set the CSS position property okay either to relative fixed or absolute so that's the first thing we need to do so let's go ahead and set position CSS property to absolute and we want that animation to happen when we click the image so when we click the image we want to call a function so within this function we want to animate that image element so I'm going to use this keyword 
to refer to that image element and let's use animate so I'll bring this to the next line and we want to use a JSON object the property that I want to change is left property and I want to set that to 300 let's actually make in a couple of more calls to this animate function okay so I'm going to remove the semicolon from here so we are chaining the animate function together okay so let's format this a bit so we want to set left position to 300 and then top to 300 left to maybe 10 and then finally top to 10 okay so to do that animation this is the code that we need so let's save the changes and look at this in action so this is our HTML page 1 reload this page and look at this when I click on the image so 300 300 so 300 on the left 300 on the top and then when it comes here now the top is 10 pixels on the left it is 10 pixels okay so basically when we click you know it's going to call this animate function on the left side it's going to have 300 pixels so that's why it pushes the image 300 pixels to the right and then it's going to do this animation on the top it's going to have 300 pixels that means it will push it down and then left 10 pixels so it's going to come back and then finally on the top 10 pixels that means it will go up leaving 10 pixels on the top so on the top now we have 10 on the left we have 10 okay so basically in this example the thing that we have to notice is now the calls there are several calls to animate function and we have chained them together so by default what's going to happen it's going to you know all these calls are going to be placed in a queue and they will be executed one after another in series rather than executing all of them simultaneously in parallel that's the default behavior thank you for listening and have a great day